Welcome to the last episode of the first section talking about everything that is considered with diagnosis. Uh, today episode is about case assessment and treatment planning. We'll talk first about how to deal with medical compromised patients. Then we will talk about discuss how to uh, how to develop an endodontic treatment plan, which is better single visit versus multiple visit treatment and what what about uh, endodontic therapy or dental implant which is one is better we will finish things up by talking about the scheduling considerations cardiovascular disease patients with intermediate clinical risk factors which means that they have past history of myocardial infarction, these and taking non-selective beta blockers can safely be given two cartridges containing uh, epinephrine as at a single appointment. A systemic review concluded that the, there is a minimal risk of using uh, constrict, constrictors in um, in anesthesia. Another review highlighted the advantages of using vasoconstrictor in the local anesthesia uh, to get the pain control, which was way better than leaving the patient feeling the pain and inducing normal uh, normal body uh, adrenaline secretion. For patients who have uh, infectious endocarditis, these patients who have uh, are are on a higher risk of getting infection from the uh, from the endodontic therapy so they are recommended to be uh, to get an um, antibiotic prophylax prophylax which is uh, which has a definite protocol that we will see now uh, it is it is a single dose uh, before 30 to 60 minutes of the procedure. Uh, it is an amoxicillin 2 grams orally. If the patient is un unable to take it orally for having ulcer uh, ulceritis, uh, ambicillin or cephalosporinate may be used by taking it um, intravascular or intramuscular. Uh, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, uh, clindamycin or azithromycin are a substitute. And if the patient is not able to, talk, to take these medicines orally, uh, it can be taken also uh, intramuscular or intravenous. You can uh, screenshot this for a reference. Patients with artificial heart valves are considered susceptible to bacterial endocarditis. Consulting the patient's physician in such cases regarding antibiotic premedication is essential. So, as for the anticoagulant therapy, they should not be stopped under any condition. So, the patient must still get them and they should not be stopped for doing an endo treatment. For diabetes patients, these, these patients, if they are well contro controlled and they do not has, have any complications like any other diseases, they are candidate for an endodontic treatment. When we are dealing with surgeries, the, pa uh, the, dent the dentist must have a consultation from the patient's physician to know uh, to know the insulin dosage or, or the need for antibiotic prophylax, uh, if there is any need for diet, dietitian um, a change, and when we are doing the procedure, we must always always have a concern about the signs and symptoms of hypolycemia, which are may include confusion, tremors, agitation, diaphoresis, and uh, tuck tachycardia. Any of these symptoms indicate that we are dealing with hypoglycemia and uh, a source of carbohydrate must be 
uh, given to the patient to increase the blood pressure the blood uh, uh, glucose usually a patient with diabetes who is well managed can take can receive the endo treatment as we said previously and no prophylactic antibiotics are required so unless the patient glucose when he is fasting is uh, 200 uh, milligram uh, then we must take a consultation and look and uh, antibiotic prophylactic may be considered as for local anesthesia it is safe for diabetic patients to take them with constrictor it does not affect anything but we we know that diabetic patients uh, has a, uh, their treat their healing is uh, is low considering in in comparison with uh, normal people so they may have uh, a more uh, a more uh, risk of getting apical periodontist more significantly but uh, they uh, but this but they this does not influence the response to root canal treatment which means that they respond to the root canal treatment although they have the they have the prevalent of uh, of getting increased apical periodontist uh, disease for the pregnancy uh, the pregnant woman is under two uh, two conditions that are um, dangerous which is the ionizing radiation or drugs it is important that in her first semester no drugs must be taken and especially ibuprofen which is an contraindication for the for the pregnant woman because it uh, can cause heart problems for the fetus or uh, it may uh, cause miscarriage as for local anesthesia it is safe whether it is lidocaine or prilocaine antibiotics like penicillin clindamycin azithromycin are also safe antiviral medications like uh, acyclovir or antifungal medications like nystatin are also safe for the pregnant woman the second uh, trimester is the safest period in which to provide root, uh, routine dental care complex uh, surgical procedures are best postponed until after delivery for malignancy Mal uh, malignancy we ha uh, as we spoke earlier there is a rule about uh, re there is a rule about uh, suspecting non odontogenic pathos uh, when we have multiple radiolucency on the roots of a vital vital tooth we must suspect that we are dealing with a non odontogenic pathosis or lesion non odontogenic lesion so the non vital pulp is actually a safe a safe uh, a safe um, thing for the doctor that we are on the safe side we are dealing with with something bacterial with, with the something pulpal nonetheless if the patient is undergoing chemotherapy or radiation to the head and neck they uh, may have impaired healing responses the treatment should be initiated only after the patient's physician has been consult consulted and usually at least it must be one week before the initiation of the treatment of the ma malignant treatment which means a, a treatment where we the body needs a time to heal before uh, the patient immune system decreases due to the radiation or the chemotherapy and if we have uh, a non a non emergence situation uh, we can postpone the 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 treatment after 
uh, the, pa the patient finishes his uh, radiation or chemotherapy. For prosthetic implants, there is no need for antibiotic prophylax, although we have uh, we have a danger of getting bacteri bacteremia, uh, but the risk is minimal in comparison. For the risk is ma is minimal for endo treatment, but it is high when we are dealing with extraction, periodontal surgery, scaling, or something that's considered with blood or infection. So uh, here we have the antibiotic prophylax is recommended, but it is uh, it is always better to get recommended that uh, there is a connection between the patient's physician and the dentist for consultation. This is um, a table that summarizes what we were talking about earlier. For Anastasia, cardiovascular disease or diabetes, pregnancy, malignancy or prosthetic implants, they are safe to be used in the range of two cartridges only in the in the fir, uh, in the appointment in the single appointment for antibiotic prophylax it is recommended for prosthetic prosthetic cardiac valves or we said that the patients who have been born with uh, cardiac uh, problems or the conjugate con conjugative right conjugative diseases cardiac diseases or um, who have uh, previous uh, endocardic endocardic infection so uh, for them the antibiotic prophylax is recommended as we said the, uh, following this protocol one dosage before the uh, single dose before the treatment in three 30 to 60 minutes and if the patient forgot to take it before the the appointment he can take it after the appointment in the range of two hours as for diabetes for endo treatment it is not recommended to take an antibiotic prophylax pregnancy no drugs intake in the first semester malignancy treatment must be before chemotherapy in at least one week for the prosthetic implants there is no need for antibiotic prophylax prior to doing any retreatment the the physician must really uh, ha have an um, assessment about why the failure has happened here we can see that this uh, this treatment was done Two years before the patient, the we can see that the 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 cotabeca is reaching the apex and the 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 treatment looks amazing, but the patient after two years started having um, symptoms of pain. Uh, after doing the retreatment, the the doctors and the dentist uh, discovered that there was a peripheral um, can canal that um, after after the obturation there was no the the tooth become non -sym non symptomatic and if uh, if for example having root fracture or defective restoration actually affects the prognosis so the the physician must have uh, really really investigate about what was the reason for the failure here for example uh, we can see that the radiolucency is um, is associated with bo both uh, roots but doing the vit the pulp testing indicated that we this tooth was vital so the retreatment was only done for this tooth and we can see that we had healing after time here the reason for uh, failure was missing a missing uh, root and the 
the not the inadequate endodontic treatment. We can see after uh, uh, eighteen months that the heal is happening. Something to take note about that uh, when we see that the tooth previously is treated well, which means that uh, the cotabeca is reaching the apex, and this and the failure happened afterwards. The bacteria associated with this type of teeth are really um, have. Uh, The bacteria is actually really aggressive and um, it refuses the, the treatment so when we when we start the instrumentation a severe except uh, exacerbations uh, can be expected and that's this is actually what happened in this case that it happened several times but when we do the retreatment the bone healing is actually fast in a, in a, in just four months, we can see that the healing of the bone was yani, spectacular. Now let's talk about answer the question: single visit versus multiple visit treatment. Which one is better, and when to choose one uh, one of the other? It is actually depend dependent about uh, on many factors regarding the number of the tooth roots, canal, canal anatomy, time available, and the cl clinician, clinicians' the skills, the severity of the patient's pre-treatment symptoms is another important consideration. For example, a patient in severe pain with or without swelling is not a prime candidate for a single visit endodontics. The initial goal for the patient in severe pain should be directed to alleviating pain with feeling of the canal deferred until until the symptoms have been brought under control so our goal when we have a symptomatic symptomatic tooth is to reduce the symptoms and to make the pain under the control which means that these types these types of uh, of uh, of cases are not a candidate for a single visit. The clinician's judgment of what the patient can comfortably tolerate, so it is dependent on the toleration of the patient, is made on a case-by-case -case basis. The second visit allows the cl clinician to determine the effect of the initial treatment and the incomplete instrumentation and feeling if the tooth is no longer symptomatic. So, some symptomatic tooth are a contradiction, contradiction for a single visit endodontic treatment. There is a systematic review that, that concluded that post-obturation discomfort was similar in single and multiple visit approaches, which means, and here they are discussing the success rate, they said that there was no apparent different between the success rate of a single versus multiple visit which means that the success rate of the endo treatment is not based about the number of visits but it is based on many other things by appropriate disinfection uh, doing the seal uh, having the apical seal the coronal seal and take uh, controlling the bacterial uh, etology of uh, the bacterial inside the root canal treatment. There actually reason something that um, elimination of the of the bacteria may not be absolutely necessary for healing, which means that we can have heal even though the canal is not fully. Uh, clear of bacteria if we have if we uh, have had the maximum reduction of bacteria possible an effective root canal f filling and a coronal coronal restoration that is actually fit 
can result in result in a high level of clinical success regardless of the number of appointments so this is important to take a perspective of but if we have the patient the 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 canal anatomy is not uh, is not difficult and this the tooth is uh, non symptomatic uh, the patient has tolerance for a single visit so why not that why not doing a single visit plan A note that is actually really important in the in the biological aspect it is not reasonable to partially instrument root canal systems which means if you do not have time to instrument the canal and remove all the pulp the pulp inside do not do it just open the the pulp chamber get rid of the pulp the pulp uh, uh, the 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 pulp that is as in the chamber in the chamber and uh, put a uh, medication then close the, the tooth but if you because if you touch the root canal system without fully uh, f- uh, fully getting the pulp out the tooth will be really 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 sim- uh, sim- will give really high painful sense Leaving residual inflam- inflamed pulp remnants or necrotic debris in the canal beco- may cause pain and be sus- suspect sub- sus- susceptible to infection. So the clinician is advised to begin canal instrumentation only if time permits the this thing. Uh, for initial inter- intentional replantation has actually a survival rate of 89% which is it, which is not higher than implants but it is a cost effective treatment modality as a last uh, as a last option of treatment for the tooth bef- before extraction it is actually important that when the tooth has a, per, a poor prognosis and there is a, a periodontal disease, extraction, extraction is indicated and should be done as soon as possible to prevent further damage to the mesial bone associated with the, with the tooth, which means that we want to preserve this bone for a, for a future implant. So um, having consideration about everything and not consisting consisting on uh, preserving the tooth which is, which has a bone uh, poor prognosis and may cause damage is actually something really wrong we must know when to preserve and when to extract now let's discuss which is better endodontic therapy or dental implant uh, here the writer differentiated between two things which is success and survival which means that one of these the implant or the endo tooth can survive in the to- in the mouth but it does not mean that they are successful which means does not mean that they are not having problem or complications so regarding the let's uh, see what the uh, studies have been made a study on 1 million and 400,000 tooth of an endodontic treatment they uh, in the 8 year range 97 of them were retained which means they survived as for implants the survival rate was 96.7 we can see how close the survival rate of both of them. But there is um, something regarding regarding the implants that uh, they ha- the implants take longer to get uh, function, which means that the patient needs to wait 
a long time before he can actually use the tooth uh, uh, the tooth th that is uh, under it is an implant and we have higher incidence of post treatment complications that requires treatment intervention The cumulative complications rate after an observation period of 10 to 16 years was 48%. But uh, it is normal that the rate of uh, complications increase when we uh, have a prolonged time of uh, observation, which means that 16 years having an implant, I think you know, it's a success. If you want to compare, for, for example, the number of appointments, the, the elapsed time before the final restoration, the number of prescripted medications, or the cost of treatment, we can see that normal teeth win the round on this because tooth implants actually to take a lot of things. And uh, for the cost efficiency, um, the normal tooth win this out now to conclude things it seems clear that patients are best served by retaining their natural dentition as long as the prognosis for long-term retention is positive it is not reasonable to extract a tooth if endodontics with a good prognosis can be complica completed it is also not reasonable Reasonable for a patient to invest in root canal therapy, a post and a crown if the prognosis is highly questionable and any an, and an implant with a good prognosis can be placed. So the challenge is to weigh all the pretreatment variables and reach a reasonable conclusion concerning the prognosis for tooth retention or implant placement which means that an implant is a good replacement of a normal teeth. But they're regarding the prognosis, if we can maintain the tooth in the as much as possible functioning, it is better than an implant. If we cannot, then an implant is a very good replacement. The author is giving us some um, advices about how to schedule our appointments regarding regarding the 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 case regarding the uh, case the pul uh, the pulpitis condition, which means if we are dealing with a vital case, which is not it can be treated can be treated in one visit. Or if you want to be treated by a multi-visit, then the clinician allows 5 to 10 days between the canal instrumentation. And if you are dealing with a non-vital tooth, there, will, there must be a week after instrumentation to maximize the antimicrobial effect of the intracanal dressing when calcium hydroxide is used. For an acute pain or swelling, non-vital cases should be seen every 40, 24 to 48 hours to monitor the patient's progress and bring the acute symptoms under control. Because further cleaning and shaping are important compo components of the treatment as the clinician seeks to eliminate persistent microbes. And the long delays between visits contribute to the de development of resistant microbial strains and should be avoided. This table summarizes how to deal with medical compromised patients dealing regarding anesthesia with the, with the constrictor and the antibiotic prophylax. For cardiovascular diseases or the diabetes or the pregnancy or the malignancy or the prosthetic implants, 
taking and staging is safe uh, in the range of two cartridges which ha which has which have epinephrine for antibiotic prophylaxis in cardiovascular disease patients these are recommended for prosthetic cardiac cardiac valves for diabetic patients who are going on an an endodontic procedure antibiotic prophylaxis is not recommended in pregnancy, pregnancy no drug intake in first semester is recommended and in malignancy patients the treatment must be before chemotherapy in at least one week for prosthetic implants no antibiotic prophylaxis is needed in a normal endodontic treatment procedure this is the protocol of the antibiotic prophylaxis uh, which is a one dosage one dose three to sixty minutes before the procedure or it can be taken if the patient forgot after the procedure in a range of two hours it can be taken orally amoxicillin two grams if the patient is unable to take it orally which if he has arthritis uh, and um, he can take it uh, whether intra intramuscular or intravenous if the patient is allergic to penicillin or uh, estephalosporin or clindamycin azithromycin can be used and if the patient is unable to take these orally he can take it intramuscular uh, or intravenous you can screenshot it if you want it as a reference the ten for the evaluation how uh, let's talk about the evaluation of the tooth to provide the treatment the dentist must evaluate the reason of endo treatment failure to know the prognosis of the tooth which is lowered in vertical root fracture and aggressive periodontal disease or if missed canals or lack of seal is the problem so the dentist must evaluate all possible treatment options starting from no treatment option to extraction and implantation option which one is better single visit for versus multiple visit in the treatment the number of vi visits do not affect the success of the treatment or the post obturation discomfort visits number are selected regarding regarding type of case patient type of case patient tolerance and dentist experience and available time dental implant or endo treatment which one is better the survival rate of both implant and endodontic treated tooth is high reaching 97 percent in the range of eight years the dentist evaluation of the tooth is subjected to many factors like tooth prognosis, the patient medical and economical, economical conditions. Normal tooth is better in less appointment needed and the ability to offer rapid function of the tooth, which means that the patient can get to the normal mastication process uh, faster than uh, an implant. Nevertheless, dental implants are the best treatment substitute when tooth prognosis is poor and extraction is done. Scheduling endodontic treatment If a vital case is to be treated by a multiple visit approach, it is suggested that the clinician allow 5-7 to seven days between canal instrumentation and obturation to allow peri radicular tissues to recover and can be done also this can be done in a single visit visit appointments to fill non-vital cases should be as scheduled approximately one week after instrumentation to maximize the antimicrobial effect of the intracanal dressing when calcium hydroxide is used acute pain or swelling non-vital cases should be seen at every 24 to 48 hours to monitor the patient's progress and bring the acute symptoms under control.